Plug-in of the week is the Universal Audio SSL 4000G bus compressor. This is one of my favorite all-time uh, mix bus compressors. Uh, the SSL consoles were, uh, 4000 series consoles, were one of the first to have a stereo bus compressor actually built right into the console, so it was physically built right in. Uh, the 4000 series is a quad output console, so the original um, VCA compressor or dual VCA compressor is actually a quad compressor circuit, So, uh, and it's connected directly with the VCA master fader. Uh, so there was an integrated design, and what Universal Audio has done is they've gone through and they've completely re-emulated uh, the entire circuit path of this uh, VCA uh, compressor. This is an all-time uh, classic. This is uh, uh, heard, you would hear this on almost every record from the 80s right into the 90s and, on, and still used on so many records today either in hardware form or, you know, in uh, plug-in form, as you would see it here. Um, this is an amazing emulation. It's a very simple uh, compressor. There's not a lot of bells and whistles to it. It has some unique things that you don't see on um, many other uh, consoles. And Universal Audio has added in a couple little features here, which will make it even easier to use than the uh, now legacy version, which is also very good. So we start with a basic threshold control here. Makeup gain, uh, nothing uh, exotic there. Uh, we have stepped attack times. Okay, so there's, uh, it's not an infinitely variable thing. Uh, you'll have those attack times there and a release circuit. So you'll have uh, a release times from 100 um, milliseconds, 300, all the way up to an auto release circuit. And essentially what this is is a multi-stage release that responds uh, as program dependent. So it will respond um, to the program um, material. Um, the ratio control, you have three selections, 2 to 1, 4 to 1, 10 to 1. What's really unique about this circuit and, and kind of cool is that it works on a variable knee. And what that means in all practicality is that when you switch from one ratio to the next, you would expect to see more game reduction if you were on 10 to 1 versus 4 to 1 versus 2 to 1. But what SSL has done very smartly is they uh, essentially have created a circuit on the knee where it shifts the threshold on that existing knee for uh, the compression. So you, you actually get a lower threshold for 2 to 1, a uh, medium threshold for 4 to 1, and a higher threshold for 10 to 1. So effectively, when you actually switch between the different ratios, you hear the different characteristic sound of the different ratio, but you don't effectively get uh, more gain reduction. So the uh, essential loudness basically stays the same. It's a very cool um, way of going about it and also allows you to really audition what it is that you're uh, wanting to do without having to simultaneously uh, adjust the threshold at the same time. So um, one of the, uh, a couple of the, well, you have an in and out switch, excuse me. So uh, the only, a couple of uh, additional features here, which are added in in this middle section. Uh, one, we have a side chain filter. So what this does is it puts a high pass filter on the low frequencies. And this is something that did not exist on the uh, original console hardware, but it's a great addition because if you have a mix that is overly uh, you know, heavy on the kick drum side, you may find that that's primarily what's triggering it, and this gives you the ability to kind of tone that back a little bit. Or sometimes you may have a very bass heavy mix that has a low, low sub mix, and that, that will uh, tend to tie up the movement of the uh, game reduction, which is such a big part, as you'll see in the audio examples, of what makes this compressor so special. So that gives you some control over that. Uh, there's also a, a wet-dry mix, which is very cool. I think every compressor should have uh, something like that built into it. And also a very a cool feature here, which is a headroom control. Effectively, what this allows you to do is it allows you to go through these different stepped positions, which are not labeled, but it basically goes from a DBFS uh, rating of 4 all the way up to 28. So it defaults to a uh, minus 16 setting. And the idea essentially is that uh, whatever headroom that you have in the mix, you can essentially uh, set this to kind of simultaneously offset the input versus output gain structure um, in and around the plugin. And therefore, um, if you find that you're you know, um, pushing your threshold up too high and still getting too much gain reduction, you can essentially lower this circuit down. And what it'll effectively do is rebalance that so you get a more workable threshold area. 
Um, that's the basic idea of it. And it also emulates the auto fade circuit. So the auto fade um, gives you an automated fade that allows you to uh, run an automated fade that runs from one second all the way up to 60 seconds. And it's a fade in, fade out circuit. So while it's flashing, uh, it will be in the fade process. And I'll show you a little bit about how you can actually work that into the mix because one of the cool ways that this feature was used was that um, it's uh, it's an active circuit. So when you select the auto fade, you can adjust the time um, while it's fading. So you could slow down the fade by increasing the time or speed it up by uh, turning the time lower. And that's how you would shape the fade. And sometimes that was a cooler way of doing it uh, than just uh, grabbing the fader and kind of uh, pulling it down manually. There's some reasons for that, which I'll kind of explain and we'll talk about. So um, let's start by uh, running a little bit of audio through it. So I have a, um, like a, just a simple instrumental here that will play through it. Um, what I'm going to start with is just uh, some basic settings here that are very common. One, one of the more common settings here is to do just like a subtle mix pump, usually just a very small amount, even like a dB or so, whether you would say like a little tickle on the gain reduction meter, uh, does wonders to kind of put glue to a mix. Uh, and and so this is one of the main features. Uh, some people like two to one, four to one, I'm more of a four to one fan, but basically let's, let's kind of have a listen to a little bit of the audio here. So obviously we have no gain reduction, so, so we have that in. So here, if I if I felt like the kick drum, which it is a little bit, was kind of uh, giving me a little bit more gain reduction than the cross stick is, then uh, I can uh, filter back a little bit here. Uh, it runs the the high pass filter runs all the way up to 500 hertz, so this will give me like the ability to kind of. Now I can get a little bit more of an even gain reduction here. What's amazing about this with the, the slow attack, the 30 millisecond attack and the 100 millisecond release is that you get this really great kind of pumping movement which adds like an, an incredible depth and just glue to the mix. Uh, you know, I've always loved this setting. This is kind of more or less my default setting um, for this, which I really love. Um, you can actually get a little bit more aggressive with it by going in a 10 to 1. more transparent with a two to one. So what you get is like a little bit more of an aggressive uh, warming kind of sound. Uh, the two to one will be a little bit more on the transparent side. Four to one is kind of lying somewhere in between there. And this is like one of the main ways that uh, this compressor is used. Another way to, to go about it, and there are many variations on this, but you can work with more of a faster attack and work in, in a little bit more of like what I would call kind of a classic broadcast limiter mode. Um, a lot of the broadcast limiters like the LA-2A or um, uh, the Fairchild uh, 670 
when you start getting into those, they more or less have like right around a millisecond attack time, and then they have a program dependent, or actually a multi-stage release. So it'll have a, a characteristic of an initial uh, quick recovery, but then a slow total recovery. Um, and so you get a similar multi-stage release kind of characteristic here uh, with the SSL. And so essentially it will respond to uh, the material that's being fed into it. Um, now, this is another way of of approaching it, and this would add more to, of a overall smoothing kind of characteristic to the mix. So let's have a listen uh, to this. I'll have to adjust the threshold here for sure, but let's just see. So you, you can see how you can actually watch and you can see how long the total release time is there as uh, with the auto setting. So you, you get that multi-stage thing. And that's, it's actually, it, it's really cool. It has like a great, very smooth kind of character. There's something that's really amazing about this. This was like the sort of go-to compressor, especially for radio mixes. Uh, there was just something about it. There There's something about um, the quality of the mid-range that especially when you start to dig into this a little bit deeper and get a little bit more aggressive, which I'll, I'll focus a little bit on now, um, you can get into um, something that uh, actually cuts through radio uh, uh, really well. And you know, although this is this is more or less a, uh, I know this because a lot of the mix work that I did was on radio singles or mixes that were specific for radio release. And this was sort of a, a absolutely a go-to compressor for that type of thing. And it works equally well today um, because that translates through, you know, uh, whatever the transmission feed, however you're getting it in, you know, just going through car uh, stereo systems and things like that. Uh, it just really, really cuts through well. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually uh, go to um, uh, an end section here of the song. And I'm just going to bypass it because uh, this particular section of the song has a different characteristic where a more aggressive approach would sort of be um, expected. But I want you to hear the original signal just so you're not confusing where this game reduction is coming from. <laughs> So just so you, you get a little bit of a feed on this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go with a, um, a more aggressive approach here. I'm just going to, I, I may go here with three millisecond or 0.3. We'll just kind of see in a second here, see which one works. In this, um, now, um, you could, I guess technically you could program two different things. I'm just kind of showing you a different uh, uh, characteristic sound that you could go for. This would work really well for a rock thing. A lot of people mix into the compressor this way. So they actually start the mix uh, with the compressor in. That was never my way of going about it, but as long as you keep an eye on it and you kind of watch what's going on, it actually can work really well to mix into the compressor. Kind of, you know, gives you some problems when you want to really get into, uh, you know, boosting, you know, excessively or anything like that, just to kind of find things. But, you know, if it's a, a if it's a work method you like, it's actually very cool. So let's, uh, let's uh, scope this out just a little bit more here, and I'm going to go through a couple different settings just so you can kind of uh, get the essence of what it's doing. <laughs> So 
So if you're if you're familiar with the SSL channel compressor, then you'll know that you know three milliseconds is the fast attack time on the channel compressor. So that's kind of built in here, and 30 milliseconds is the slow attack time. This gives you um, faster attack time. So I'm going to go here. I kind of like that because it allows some of the transient to cut through, so you're not cutting down on it too much. But uh, I'm going to show you one other thing, and then this is a perfect place where we can run in the parallel chain to kind of uh, to blend this out a little bit. So here you can see how the transient kind of gets swallowed up a little bit more there. So you can hear the way it just pulls everything together. Now I'll kind of work with a bit with the mix control here. So zero would be uh, no compression. So this becomes like a great way to just sort of give the overall mix just like a nice heavy crush. And, and this is like a very, very welcome addition on all of this. Uh, so this, this just uh, works out really well. Um, it's okay to get that gain reduction up that high. It's just, you know, kind of follow the gain reduction meter, more or less kind of match your gain and you're good to go. Uh, one other uh, quick thing here. Uh, we could also see just, I, I was curious to see what this sounded like uh, in another section from the song. So maybe I'll just kind of zip back here a little bit and just see. As a, as a mix in parallel. such a, a, a great way of kind of taking and solidifying the imaging uh, in a parallel situation. So this is not available, obviously, on the original hardware. I wish it was. Probably would have used it a little bit more this way. Um, okay, so this is those are just some basic ideas. You can really play around with it. I sometimes do similar settings aggressively with the auto release. Uh, depends kind of on the tempo and kind of more or less what works, but uh, for this particular one, the 300 millisecond uh, release time worked uh, pretty well. So uh, you have some options there. So even though you're limited in terms of the timings and stuff, uh, it actually, if you just really dig into it and play with it, and this is really too true of the uh, channel compressor as well, um, if you start to really play with the ratio and the threshold almost kind of simultaneously, and uh, um, you know, along with the uh, release time, it's amazing how you can really shape the characteristic movement of the compression, and that's really the whole key to to making a compressor, especially a mix bus compressor, work. It's all about the movement. It's not just about you know uh, squashing uh, dynamic range. It's about you know like how are you focusing and and pumping and breathing life into into it and part of that is the kickback from from the game reduction sort of like a little bit of a boomerang effect that helps to create some depth so when you put this in what you should really notice is a little bit more front back depth kind of going on just one quick thing here on the auto fade um, the auto fade is actually a pretty simple thing you set a start time uh, you start and let's just kind of start here at this end this would be a classic place where you would run a fade and and what it does is it basically uh, just runs just a, a linear fade out, right? So you just get a simple fade, you select a time, and sometimes this is cool if you know you want to end it at a certain point. You know, for most people it's easier to just kind of draw it in, uh, so I'm not sure this, there's a, a net benefit here. Um, on the, the totality by running this. There is one cool feature here. If you if you kind of map this out 
to a knob. So what I've done here is I've just uh, set this up just so you can kind of see. So what I have here is an automation which turns the auto fade on right where I want it to start here. And then uh, what I've done is I've set the automation here on the rate control. So it goes back to one. The reason for this is that the auto fade works in both directions, right? So it works simultaneously as a fade in and a fade out circuit. Um, so in other words, if I, if I actually um, enable this, here, let me just kind of go back here. Okay, so now the rate is, is set to one second. So when it, it uh, here, let me just kind of adjust it here, right? So while it's flashing, it, it's uh, fading, and then when it goes solid, it's completed the fade. So now it's faded out, and the same will happen on the back end, except the switch will turn off, and now we're faded back up. So you can do a fade in and fade out, and you can uh, enable that at any point. So you could do the, the you know uh, mix type of thing where you start to fade out, and then you fade back in at the end or something like that. You can start to get into that. The way that these, this used to be done, and whether it's useful in DAW uh, world, um, I guess that's up to you. Um, but essentially what I've done here is I've set it so that it, it maxes out. So as soon as I play through this position here, um, I'm going to just uh, set this into a touch latch mode. Uh, but if you map this out to a knob, the way that a lot of people use this is that as the fade, uh, as you got to the point where you wanted to start to run the fade, you would hit the auto fade button and then you would manually adjust the uh, rate while the fade is going. Now, in the SSL uh, G-Series computer system, it would record this into the VCA fader, which is actually part of the circuit. And uh, this automation would get recorded in uh, so that it would just play back, right? So once you've written in the auto fade exactly the way that you want it, it would be programmed in and just play back on the VCA master fader. Um, but the way that a lot of people use this and the way that I used it is that you, you hit the button at the start and then you adjust the time to make this, the fade uh, actually speed up or slow down depending upon which way you adjusted it. And you could actually do a very similar thing here. So I have it in touch latch mode and you're going to see an automation that's going to look nothing like a fade because it's just uh, this right here. So you kind of get a sense of what that does. So if I want to speed up the fade, and now if I want to slow it down, right, and then I can also fade back in the other direction, and nothing happens. There we go. I think I didn't hit it, and we're running out of time. <laughs> uh, then I think I hit my other fade. So, okay. So uh, that's that's my bad on that end. I think I kind of uh, mixed something up here. But uh, essentially what you could do is you can adjust that and that will adjust the fade in. Oh, I know what it is. I didn't undo the auto fade, right? So that didn't write in. That's so, um, or I didn't do it until too late. You can see it kind of happened there, but then it was already chasing the end of my fade. Um, but the basic idea is there. So you could do a fade in, fade out kind of thing. That was what I was trying to do, failing miserably. But uh, I think you get the basic idea of it. So um, that's it. You know, uh, amazing um, emulation. You know, great emulation of an all-time classic uh, compressor in, um, in in the history of uh, mixing and audio. So it's a it's a, a great all-time classic one. And uh, Universal Audio, as they uh, always uh, do, uh, makes uh, amazing emulations. And this is a really good one worth having. So there you have it. Plugin of the week, the uh, Universal Audio SSL 4000G bus compressor.